Jeff Arnold from Gainesville, Florida. Let's do it unto the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Huntley. Very kind. Thank you. I leaned over to Brother Carney and I said, I thought I was speaking. Thank you. Thank you. And I especially want to thank all of you for your kindness to me and, and your prayers and all the folks that kind of worked with me last year and bailed me out. And uh, I just feel like telling everybody and everybody in hell, I'm still here. <laughs> Hallelujah. I have heard nothing but absolutely glowing, fantastic reports of every speaker, and uh, I have no idea what I'm doing here. Uh, thank you, Brother Carney, for inviting me. Thank you for, thank you for just loving me. You know, I have no mom and I have no dad. They're all gone. My aunts and uncles are gone. I buried both my brothers. They're gone. I have no sisters. So I'm just kind of like... A loner and it's been a wonderful gift to me that through the ranks of the United Pentecostal Church great and wonderful people like you and like my brethren that you have somehow allowed me to fit into your life and allowed me to be a part of your life because you are the only family that I have and maybe that's why I'm intense and why I'm passionate because I wasn't raised this way I was a hell raiser and a honky tonker and I was a dirt bag and a pool hustler and and we won't go any further. <laughs> so with that, it is uh, 10 minutes to 9 my time. My Geritol kicks out at 9.30. <laughs> so I'd like to just preach for a few minutes. I do not want to entertain you. I, I want to snatch you out of your chair. So I'm reading... I'm reading and you're hearing from two parts of the scripture from the book of Matthew chapter 14. If you'd like to go there quickly with me, Matthew 14, and beginning please with verse 22. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up in the mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come... He was there alone. I would ask just your indulgence for a few moments, especially you preachers. Don't finish my sermon before I do. I know everybody in this place, oh my God, he's going to talk about Peter getting out of the boat. Well, you ain't read my notes. And the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with the waves, for the wind was contrary. It usually is if you're going against the wind. You'll get that later. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea, and the disciples saw him walking on the sea. They were, they were uh, somewhat troubled, I would be too saying it is a spirit they cried out for fear and straightway jesus spake unto them saying be of good cheer it is i be not afraid and peter answered him and said lord if it be thou bid me come unto thee on the water and he said come and when peter was come down out of the ship he walked on the water to go to jesus one more scripture from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 9, you don't have to turn there. I'll, I'll tell the truth. I really will. For I think that God has set forth us apostles last, as if it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world, to angels, to men. 
for we are fools for Christ's sake. And I have one last thing to say to you, and this does not come from the Bible. One came from Paul in his epistle, the other came from Matthew's gospel, and the last one comes from Connie Francis. You don't know who Connie Francis is, but I was honking tonky with her back in the 50s and the 60s. And Connie Francis, Francis had a million dollar seller record. Now, I don't want you to go listen to all that stuff. I'm just going into the archives of my mind. Connie Francis had a song that we used to dance to and used to sing. She used to simply say, everybody's somebody's baby. Everybody's somebody's fool. And there is no exception to the rule, yes, everybody is somebody's fool. So I want to talk to you for a little while tonight on the subject if everybody is somebody's fool, whose fool are you? Lord, bless the ministry and let me be a blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I don't want to be offensive and I don't want you to get all ticked off because I'm supposed to preach good. But we are called by God to be fools. We're not called fools. We're called by God to be fools. And the scripture says we are fools for Christ's sake. And I looked up in Webster's Dictionary and, and here's where I want to help you for a little bit. Fool or foolish. To appear lacking good sense. The key word is appear. Now oh, forget you. I'm not talking to the living dead no more. The key word is appear. We appear fools to the world, to angels, to devils, to mankind, but to God. He said, I like it. Woo! Let me go a little further. To act seemingly ridiculous. The key word, seemingly. All you doing your little post-hypnotic trance, just stay where you are. All of you folks doing your little impersonation of Mount Rushmore, I'm not talking to you. But I'm talking to the folks who are sitting on the verge saying, I'm fixing to bust a move here. I'm fixing to spring out of my chair. I'm fixing to throw my head down because you don't know like I know what he's done for me. He brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on the rock to stay. He established my goings. He put a song in my mouth, even praise unto the Lord. Hold it before you sit down. Turn left and right real loud and say, Hey, baby cakes. Whose fool are you? No, you, no you're not. You're getting too wussified on me. I said, Whose fool are you? Are you a fool for the devil? Are you a fool for this world? Are you a fool for Jesus Christ? I got a word from the Lord. You can sit down. You can just sit down. I'll, I'll be there in a minute. I'm going to ask you a few little questions. First, you must understand something. The major challenge that we have, not just this conclave, but the whole United Pentecostal Church, the great challenge that is facing us is simply this. Will we accept being mediocre or will we reach for the miraculous, the impossible, and the supernatural? Now, if you want to be mediocre, that's your business. But the last time I checked, the mediocre are always at their best. 
I don't want to hurt you, Rev. I'm telling you, we are facing a great trauma and dilemma in the Pentecostal movement. We are developing an academic church and not an apostolic church. Now, I'm not against you going to Bible school. I'm not against you, your flip chart. You want a lot of people. I'm not saying that. But we have reached a point now because we are running out of time. We have got the yes, we academic, but we must be absolutely apostolic. We must have signs and wonders and miracles and gifts of the Spirit. Because if we don't get past being academic, all we are is a cosmetic church. We apply a few principles and a few precepts and we clean up our life a little bit. Thank God for that. Thank God for doctrine. Thank God for academics. But baby, we are way, way off and we ain't got time to relearn all this stuff. Now, now you're not getting it yet. Let let me go a little further. (laughs) To act unusually, to seemingly act absurd. To be reckless in one's actions. Let me help you with this, baby. I died here last time I was here. I don't plan on dying again. If this is going to be your last service, make it a memorial. Make it a monument. Make it, make it so you can touch the hem of his garment. So you can act uproariously. I want to know, where are the fools for Jesus Christ? Woo! You can sit down. I don't, I don't mean to hurt nobody's feelings. I'm just, I guess, a rude dude. I don't mean to be that way. That's just the way I, I want to I, I live in Gainesville. Now, I don't care what you guys do in Mississippi. You for sports, against sports, I don't give a flip. You do whatever you want. Uh, it, you, I'm not trying to pastor nobody. I'm just trying to help you. I live in idolatry city. Now, now let me help you with this. Contrary to what you may think, the issue is not sports. The issue is worship. The issue isn't being a fan. The issue is idolatry. So you go to your games or watch them on TV or do whatever you want. I have have no problem. Do what you want. But I want to know, when you get your caucus in the church, are you going to be a statue or are you going to be... Are you going to start jumping? Are you start running? Are you going to act uproariously? Are you going to act hilariously? Are you going to act what seemingly is absurd? You mean you're going to do for a ball game what you would not do for Jesus Christ? Whose fool are you? Ah! Sit down. Sit down. I don't want you walking out here saying Brother Arnold's on some kind of Holiness kick. Let me tell you what, Jack. Football ain't got nothing to do with holiness. Baseball, basketball, you're, you're out of your mind. Has to do with adoration and allegiance and commitment and what's a priority in your life. But now, I'm going to say this kind as I can. Don't get mad at me, all you, you, you critiquers. Don't get mad at me. You, whatever you're doing, fine. I'm the only guy, Matthew, that's one of our fellows from Gainesville, Matthew. I'm the, even when you was growing up, I was the only pastor that I knew in the entire city of Gainesville that didn't go to the Gator games. I'm the only guy. Everybody else got front row tickets. I'm a moron. I'm a fool. I'm an idiot. I'm bigoted. I'm biased. I'm whacked. Fine. In fact, I'm so anti-Gator, I don't even drink Gatorade. Tomorrow. I'm in Gainesville 31 years, 31 years. Haven't got it right yet, but I'm there 31 years. Now watch, 
Watch. A few months ago, don't get mad at me. A few months ago, I said, you know, folks, Sunday morning, place is packed. I said, you know, I've been looking at all this stuff. I've been, I've been such a narrow-minded idiot. And I asked you not to do this and not to do that, trying to help you get spiritual. And, uh, you know, I'm reevaluating my position on going to the games. Doc, when I said that, I had never had so much attention in all my life. Every carnal bimbo was up on their rear end and up on the tips of their toes going, whoa. And all the senior saints were going, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Help him, Lord. Help him, Lord. Help him, Lord. There's a deceiving spirit on him. Now, I'm only taking a second for a commercial. So I said, you know what? Maybe I've been wrong about all this ball game stuff. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe it won't affect us. Maybe I'm just a, a wussified, weak-kneed wacko. Fine. I'll tell you what. If we decide this year to buy a season's pass, and we start going to the games. By the way, the tickets are 200 bucks each, minimum. I said, uh, I'm willing to consider going if you'll meet my four conditions. Lay it on us, preacher. Lay it on us. I said, first place, the game's four hours. I said, some of you crazy folks come with leaving on your mind. This is the best thing that you could ever be involved with. Is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in the kingdom of God. I'm not trying to cause no trouble. Please don't misread what I'm saying. Go to your ball games, dance with the cheerleaders, do what you want. I don't care. Just do what you want. Fine. But their games are four hours. We're here an hour and a half, and maybe we have a blowout. We got two hours, maybe. I said, so I don't want to hear no griping about you if I preach long. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Point number two. You can't get a seat for less than 200 bucks. Some of you people got super glue on your fingers. Some of you folks wouldn't tie that Jesus asked you to tie. I said, you'll pay 200 bucks to watch nine or 11 fools run down the hallway there and they got the morals of a barnyard dog and couldn't tell the truth standing on the Bible looking at Jesus and you're in a stand. Yeah. And I said, point number three, the place is baptized with emotion. And here you sit. And none of them can forgive your sins. And none of them can give you a brand new future. And none of them can take care of your past. If we're going to make some noise, if we're going to act a little foolish... We ought to get foolish for the Lord of glory. Woo. Yeah. Now, that wasn't in my sermon. That was free. I'm talking about acting uproariously crazy. Because, because my friends that all go to those games, they talk about people that paint their faces blue. They paint their hair straight up in the air. They got gals jumping all over the place dressed in a Band-Aid. They're pouring beer on you. They're throwing popcorn on you. Don't bother you one bit. Yet you come to church and say, she's in my seat. I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just trying to say, where are the fools for Jesus Christ's sake? Where are the fools that say, I don't care where I sit. I'm just glad to be here. I'm just glad to be a part of the church. I'm just glad to be in this house. I'm just glad to be called by his name. Now, please be seated. I got to go real fast here. I just got to ask you a few questions. Are Jesus' claims and promises too lofty for us? 
Are his promises and his revealed intentions too impossible for people like us to take a risk? I, I don't know how to say this. It ought to be dangerous sitting next to a holy roller. Somebody's going to dance on your blue suede shoes. Somebody's going to knock your hat off. Somebody's going to slap you upside your head. You say, well, that's outrageous. That's the kind of people the Lord is looking for. People that aren't worried about cosmetic Christianity. People that are worried about, I want to bless the Lord with all my strength, with all my voice, with all my heart. He's been so good to me. Woo! Sit down. Sit down. I'm almost to my sermon. Hold on. See, I want to ask you something. Are you afraid to act foolish? Is your image that you have to protect so well that important to you? Let me help you with it, sweetheart. Your miracle is just on the other side of acting foolish. Your miracle and your answer and your deliverance is just on the other side of tearing off the roof. Of screaming at the top of your voice. Of saying, Jesus, have mercy on me. Don't let nobody shut you down. Don't let nobody stare you down. They're not fighting your devils. They're not fasting your meals. They're not praying your prayers. Lift up your voice. fall over dead. I've been dead once. Excuse me. I'm fixing to have a fit. He's my healer. He's my lover. He's my protector. He's my provider. He's my closest friend. He is my King of Kings and my Lord of Lords, and He loves me! Woo. You're getting there, fools for Christ's sake! You're getting there, fools for Christ's sake! You, you, you can sit down. Can I go a little further, Rev? I'm not trying to cause you no trouble. You pass in your own church. You do whatever you want. Ain't my business. Boy, I'll, you brother need to pray for me right now because I'm fixing to get downright ugly. I, I'm fixing to surprise myself. That's how ugly I'm fixing to get. Well, this will be my last trip here. I'll make it a memorial. We preachers that try to believe in godliness and holiness and righteousness, we ask our ladies, try to be modest. I don't know how I can say this. I'm not interested in seeing your cleavage. I got something like that at the house. I don't want to see your underwear. I don't want to see your hiney flash in the breeze. I don't want to see you in a dress that you got painted on. You're a fool, but you're not a fool for Christ's sake. You're a fool for this world. You're a fool for the devil. I'm telling you preachers, you better hear me. Don't let the backslider tell you and I we're a bunch of fools because we try to be morous, modest, unclean, godly, righteous, holy. I got a problem with a bunch of nincompoop Pentecostal backsliders telling all of us we're a bunch of fools. You're not a fool because you live for God. You're a fool because you walk away from truth.
not trying to cause you no trouble. Sit down. I'm not a clothesline preacher. I'm not against everything but fresh air. I'll be 68 years old in a few days. I got a right to say something. You had a great church while I was a whoremonger and a drunk and a liar and a jailbird. You allowed me to come among you. When I first came among you, Brother Webb, I thought you cats were rejects from Barnum and Bailey Circus. You laugh at all you want to. My mother was Roman Catholic. We went to confession. We went to mass. Oh, yeah, we learned how to say the rosy. Holy Mary, Mother God, pray for us in now. Hail Mary, full of grace, Lord is with thee. Bless us the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Oh, I knew all that stuff. Play with the beads. And my wife left, my mom left the Catholic Church because she married a Protestant. Well, my dad was a Glendale Reformed Lutheran. That wasn't much further away from the Catholics. They just didn't have bees. They just had lots of dead folks. Now you laugh all you want to because it don't mean nothing to you. But see, I'm, I'm near the end of my days. And I see this, excuse the rude one, I see this puke belching out of the Pentecostal movement. And it really, it doesn't make me afraid. It angers me. So, so we got the gall to say people like G.T. Haywood and N.A. Ershon and G.A. Mangan and J.T. Pugh. They're a bunch of fools. I'm telling you, they weren't fools. And if you try to walk in holiness and righteousness, I don't care what your little backslidden friends say and all your whoremongering relatives say, they are the fools. We are not the fools. I'm not trying to play the audience. I'm not trying to play the audience. I'm just telling you what I see going on. I pastor a fine church, but even in a fine church, the pressure comes up from the pew to make me change, to make me give up, to give this away, give that away, give this away. After a while, I want to know when you say this is okay and that's okay and this is okay, where does it stop? And don't buy that trash like, well, we're standards. Let me tell you, the Catholics, the Presbyterians, the Episcopalians, the Baptists, the Methodists, the Lutherans, they all have standards. They're just a little lower than ours, but they all have standards. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm causing you trouble. I'm going to be a fool for Christ's sake until I die. I'm going to go a little further for you, brethren. And if I end up in the rapture and I find out that I was half wrong about all the stuff I tried to refrain from, I will be inside the city and I'll have a lot of time to make up for lost time. But if I was right and that door closes in front of people, See, I don't lose nothing by trying to be modest and moral and separated in God. I don't lose nothing. You, you me seated. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm taking so long. I'm, crowds make me nervous. I want to ask you, who is the fool right now? Who is the fool? The person that rejects the supernatural or the person that embraces the supernatural. One of them's a fool. Now, the person that believes in creation is looked at by people who are intelligent, whatever that means, as foolish. I mean, are you, are you foolish enough to actually sit here and try to tell me that an invisible God from some invisible place spoke into invisibility and all of a sudden, poof, the material world showed up? I, I'm, I'm going to make you answer me. I'm going to make you answer me. You actually foolish enough to believe that, that God took some dirt and formed it into a body and blew in it to the breath of life. <laughs> and Adam said, good morning. I'm foolish enough to believe that. And the God that could make a man can remake a man. 
foolish enough to believe that he put Adam to sleep and a rib came out and he made this fine looking babe. Sit down, sit down. I'm, I'm, I'm just talking about myself. I hope I don't embarrass you, Brother Huntley, because you said all those accolades about me. I, I'm foolish enough to actually believe. I believe the story of Israel's deliverance. I, I, I'm not getting much help here right now. I believe that you talk about a mind-boggling story that God took a man who stuttered and a stick and set two and a half million slaves free. I'm here to tell you, Brother Dylan, if he can set a nation free, he can set a person free. He can set a city free. He can set a church free. He can set an organization free. All he needs is someone like Moses who doesn't even speak well and said, I'll do my best. Stay with me. Yes, I can. I'm sorry. I'm just sweating so bad here. I believe the story. I, I don't know how. You know, you can have faith and have no understanding. Listen to me. Reason, rationale, and understanding try to advise us how to live and how to act, but they never worship. Just remember, reason and rationale are made to stand outside while faith goes inside. Don't let somebody who's got more degrees than a thermometer and a baptized brain try to tell you and say, well, I just don't think it takes all that. Well, I always answer, well, I do, and I got the microphone. Because I need a miracle, and I need an answer, and I need a deliverance, and I'm persuaded that all of those are just on the other side of reaching the highest zenith of being foolish for God. I'm going as fast as I can. I believe that manna fell, don't understand it. That rock came, water came out of a rock. That quail fell from the sky. That somehow, now you talk about foolish, Brother Carney, foolish. Now, I, these people think I'm foolish. I want to know how foolish did that guy who could stutter. Da, 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 da. That's what he did because the Bible said when he was in Egypt, he spoke real well. Read it in Acts 7. He was a man mighty in word and deed. See, that's a lot of people. As long as you're in Egypt, you can talk fine. You can talk about everything when you're in Egypt. Now all of a sudden you're a child of God in the kingdom and you're tongue-tied. And if you're not tongue-tied, you just stutter. Don't you think God's got a sense of humor? I think that's funny. God's going to put on the biggest jailbreak recorder in human history. What does he do? He sends a guy that can't talk. To talk to the biggest monarch on the planet. He's the ruler of the biggest kingdoms on the earth. He sends a guy in with sheep dung between his toes, stuttering in his mouth, and a magic stick. And he's fixing to take on the entire Egyptian empire, and he's crazy enough to believe he can do it. I'll try it again. If God be for me, it does not matter who or what is against me. It doesn't matter how foolish it sounds. It doesn't matter how foolish it looks. And it doesn't matter how foolish you feel. Let me, let me, let me get to my sermon. I, I'm foolish enough to believe that that old guy with the stuttering and the stick came down from the mountain with ten commandments written by the finger of God and God ain't got a finger. You say, it says it's written by the finger of God. That's anthropomorphism. That's, that's when God uses human ter terminology so you can understand spiritual things. God ain't got a finger. God ain't got eyes. God ain't got feet. God ain't, no, he, he ain't got none of that stuff. Those are human attributes. But he is other than us. So he gives to himself attributes so we can understand. Have you ever seen, the Bible said the eyes of the Lord run to and fro. All the Have you ever seen any eyeballs running around anywhere?
Bible said the Lord runneth swiftly. He don't run. He's already there. That's a term trying to inspire your faith. Are you sure you want me to preach the last night? I know everybody's supposed to explode and everybody's going to get healed and the dead are going to be raised and all that fine. I, I, let me get out of the Bible because I'm having a hard time with the Bible. Let me, let me get where you are. Everybody, somebody's fool. Well, if everybody is somebody's fool, who's fool of you? Oh, you didn't like Connie Francis? I'll try Brooke Benton. You remember Brooke Benton? He doesn't preach for us, but he used to sing. And Brooke Benton said, fools rush in where wise men fear to go. But angels and wise men, they never fall in love. So how are they to know? What was he saying? Only fools act crazy. How long has it been since you come to church or your own prayer meeting and you just went, Shame on you that before you bust a move and act crazy, you see who's sitting next to you. If whoever's sitting next to you can shut you down, ask them to move. Well, what are they going to think? Who gives a flip what they think? Our business is with God. Our business is with the Lord. It matters whether God thinks it's good. Listen, listen to me. Just stay on your feet just for 60 seconds. Listen to me. This is the difference between David and Saul. Saul, because he's a religious junkie, he's in love with the palace and with his position. Watch out, presbyters and superintendents. David is in love with his presence. You're not getting it yet. Me and you's fixing it. I don't know whether you jump around, but I'm going to make you go with me in just a minute. Get all that money out of your pocket so you lighten yourself up a little. Now you got that gold, gold bunion in there. Just hold on. Now you're not getting it yet. David comes back, bringing back the ark, acting foolishly. I mean, he's moving and grooving, baby. He's hitting and getting and going. But his old lady is hanging out the window. And she's got an attitude. Why? Because she's not in love with his presence. She's in love with her position and the palace. And when David comes back, she says, How glorious was the king this day that acted foolishly and uncovered himself before the young maidens. He said, You think that was bad? I'm fixing to bust a move. I'm, 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 I'm fixing to get a hold of Jerry Wayne here. Come on. I appreciate your opinion, but your opinion does not count. I want to be a fool for Christ's sake. I want to be a fool for Jesus' sake. You're closer to your miracle than you realize. You can sit down. I'm trying to get to my sermon. I can't get to it. I'm sorry. I can't get to it. I got too much to say. I just want to ask you a question. I'd like to ask all these brethren... On the platform, you that clap and you that stare. You that, well, I'm going to say something. They don't, they don't want me at the general conference. I'm going to tell you right now, I would not follow 
or listen to a preacher that wouldn't worship. I didn't say they got to go crazy, but I think they ought to have a tear come down their eye. I think their lip ought to quiver. I think they ought to put their hand up because we lead by precept and by practice. Why would your church want to act foolish when you act stoic? Okay, don't turn. Don't sit down. Turn and look at someone next to you and say, uh, listen, Latenda, who, who, whose fool are you? No, 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 that's, that's too wussy fight. I'm going to ask you again. I said, I said, whose fool are you? Has God ever done anything for you? Has God ever answered a prayer for you? Has God ever touched you in your darkest time, in your loneliest time? Has God ever picked you up when you had fallen flat on your face? Now, brethren, reverend, if God's never done nothing for you, sit on your duff, lock your lips, fold your hands, close your legs, and just be a religious junkie. See, here's our problem. Here's, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I listened to the Reverend Obama the other day on the radio. Yeah, and, and I listened to him. And here's what the Reverend Obama said. I am determined during my presidency to do all I can to change the moral direction of America. I heard that with my own ears, and I said, really? I am determined to change the spiritual direction of the United Pentecostal Church. I am going to push us and stretch us until we have signs and wonders as much as we have people getting the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's as much as our heritage as anything. Just because the latter rain came in in the 40s and 50s and messed us up, we're long overdue to get back to pick up the mantle and pick up the rod and pick up the supernatural and show this world Jesus is alive. I know I'm having a hard time. I'm just having a hard time here. You be seated. I'm trying to help you. I just want to ask you a question. I, I, I'm in a police line up here, so I can't see halfway back. So you folks that are hiding in the cheap seats. I want to ask you a question. Is there no place in the Pentecostal realm for impulse, for impetuous acting, for crazy outlandish antics, is there no place that you can bypass and override reason just because you know and you believe? See, I, I, I didn't help you there. There has got to come to the Pentecostal movement that instant of just unexplainable blast off. I'm telling you, in a few minutes, this thing's going to go ballistic. I'm telling you, it is. God is waiting on you and I to decide right now whether we want to be foolish or not. And now, wait a minute. I don't want you to misunderstand. Foolish does not always mean emotional. Just foolish. I'm going to try it again. Is there no place in this movement right now, in this church, in this service, for unusual and outlandish behavior of emotional expressions of hungry souls and desperate people, of extraordinary displays that produce extraordinary deliverances? We keep sitting here waiting for the Spirit of God to come to us. I got a feeling the Holy Ghost is saying, you come to me.
I'm telling you right now, there's enough power in this building. You can lay your hand on someone real close to you and God would fix them and God would heal them and God would bless them if you're willing to look foolish. Hey, Brother David, get over here. I need a good blessing. Put one on me. Put one on In me. In the name of the Lord, Jesus, yes. God, right yes. now. Yes, right now. The power of the presence I of believe the Holy it. Ghost, God. Have a shot. Let him see the power of the Holy Ghost. Let him see the power of the Holy Ghost. Let him see the power of the Holy Ghost. Let him see the power of the Holy Ghost. Let him see the power of the Holy Ghost. Let him see the power of the Holy Ghost. Let him see the power of the Holy Ghost. Let him see the power of the Holy Ghost. Let him see the power of the Holy Ghost. I'll be back in a minute. Are we fools for Christ's sake? Are we fools for the world? Are we fools for the devil? Make up your mind. We need to reach right now. We need to praise right now. Come on, get loud. Get boisterous. Get emotional. Get demonstrative. Lift up your voice. Come on, tear the roof off the building. Come on, here we go. Here we go. You can get healed right now. You can get delivered right now. Come on, come on, keep going, keep going. Don't worry about our visitors. Don't worry about the politicians. Don't worry about the precious people that are here. Keep going, come on. You're just one foolish act away from getting fixed, away from getting delivered, away from getting everything God wants you to have. If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Can you believe for Jesus' sake? Stop waiting for me to continue my sermon. Come on, let the Lord work. Let the Holy Ghost move. Let the power of God break through this thing.
Come on. Come on. Hey, come on. Come on, woman with the issue of blood. Get the climbing through. Get the crawling on the ground. Come on. You think somebody was foolish? That man that was blind, Jesus put mud and spit on his eyes. You don't think he looked crazy and foolish walking with that junk on his face? But he got a miracle, but he got healed, but he got delivered. Come on, come on. If everybody's somebody's fool, who's fool of you? Come on, one time in your life, go crazily foolish. Go crazy and foolish. Scream aloud, jump up and down, lift your voice up. Come on, do something absurd, seemingly crazy. You say, that's so foolish. He might be the first step towards his miracle. What looks like foolishness could be the first step to your miracle. Come on, come on, lay hands on somebody. You may feel foolish, it may look foolish. If you don't want to pray for them, ask somebody to pray for you. said I don't care what the bank said I don't care what the mortgage company said act a little foolish with your faith in the Lord and see what God will do he just healed brother tipped his legs your little baby What's the matter with that little man? We just sent preachers to the other building. We got over 300 people praying. They got, we sent preachers over there to pray for people. He just started acting weird and clenching his jaw.
Amen. Don't tell me about you feel like it's foolish. How foolish you think Noah looked. How foolish you think he felt when everybody called him an old fool. But his foolishness became his salvation. You got to act in the face of things that looks crazy. Enoch looked like a fool, but he was listening to a world that his world was ignorant about. And Enoch walked out of this world. Don't die out. Don't die out. Don't die out. Keep reaching. Keep reaching. Keep reaching. Keep reaching. Keep reaching.